With spirituality, we take on the pain, the confusion, the disarray of the entire world, completely, psychologically, bodily, philosophically. We're deep, deep, deep Quiet, quiet, calm. And in that, you become so quiet that you can see that which the wise still call God. It's an omnipresent purity and beauty and kindness that no words can suffice to begin to express. But when we're quiet, we'll see that that purity, that decency, that wonder, that goodness that a mother sees in a child's, in the firstborn's eyes, that you'll experience in the presence of great art. There is a uh, decency inborn in our heart and soul that we can call compassion, and it's generated through a wisdom of understanding and completeness with our experience with God. So the meditative practices, the spiritual practices are very important. But the end result always is to literally experience that which we call God, experiences of this realm, of this world. And it's a lost kingdom. It is a hell, and it's the only hell in eternity. Just to explain this today. It happened. It's like a trillion times smaller than the smallest subatomic particle imaginable. The entire world system, the physical world, it's as nothing. I just want to clearly let us understand that God has nothing to do with this. This is a hell, <laughs> a lost kingdom, like was said. And if you understand that fully, and every spiritual person in your environment, discuss it with them, will say, yes, they feel something of unimaginable grandeur and beauty and decency and truth. It's quite beautiful. It's the feeling you feel when you fall in love or when you care. There is a preciousness to life and a cleanliness emotionally, spiritually, psychologically. So as spiritual beings, I will speak for myself. I'm one of many, many millions. Everyone in this room has felt this or feels it continuously. There's a purity and, and a beauty involved with our relationship with God because God is just beauty, kindness, warmth, decency. And the experience of God is, which we're going to go into, called illumination, enlightenment. Uh, you're at one with this experience. I feel it 24 hours a day, all of my life, no matter what's happening humanly, but experientially, I'm not involved with the world, although I have a compassion for everyone, completely. It doesn't mean I see eye to eye with any idiot on the street whatsoever, but I see it, I understand it, I perceive it. I get it, and my mission is to end all the confusion, all the pain, all the trauma, and the deepest, deepest center of it, yes, if during this process maybe some group of people don't want to get it eventually, then, then that's okay too. The point is we have compassion for everyone in such subtle areas of their experience, and we're willing to walk an extra mile with them. And at the end of the day, if there are those that don't want to go there again, that's okay. We experience, we'll say for myself, I could grow up reading a newspaper or a book about, the encyclopedia about this area of the world or that area or some sort of condition in the world, and I would understand that, and I would have compassion for all the people 
all the animals, all the birds and the trees. At the same time, I always knew that they were simply lost, confused. There are no places, there are no animals or people. They're just godness. It's an equal present purity and wonder. And it's a person. It is the person of you as well as the person of God. And when we're spiritual, we know that we can heal the entirety. Isn't that wonderful? And that's what we're about today. Healing. My friend Donna walked in today and she had a traumatic medical emergency yesterday and uh, she simply did one of the processes we talked about here and today where we count back from 100 to 90 and then you can keep going and, and if you want to be peaceful you go 100, 99, 98, you just very quietly within yourself, you don't think of anything else and you'll be quiet. That's one of tens of thousands of processes that are available to all of us all to quiet yourself, to calm yourself, to see beyond the illusion. In other words, the physical world is the, the apparition. It, it's not really here. It's been called hell or whatever you want to call it. It's, it's not relevant to the spiritual. Having experienced this 24 hours a day all of my life, I at some point discerned that the world there are many people that are lost and and it's very sad, but all spiritual people at a, at a certain point in their life realize, okay, they generate this presence and, and they can be warm and kind and uplifting to those around them and in so many different ways. But at a point they realize that that's not what's needed. That the world is very lost, that they need a way out of the madness in their own mind by believe, in believing this is real and the different forces of temptation that come through each person. So our real purpose in being here is to teach, to avail others of this understanding of how to fight their own temptations. <laughs> because therein lies the problem. If you're spiritual, count back from 100 to 90, you're not just in a quiet, you're in the pure land itself. And when I did this in India, there was a woman was the president of the American Hypnosis Institute. And I, I, I've never done that. So I said how we were running a conference in on meditation and spirituality in Delhi in 1970 or so. And so I said, asked her how, you know, what that was. And so she said, count back from 100 to 90. And so as soon as she said that, I understood auto suggestion at, like in that moment. And so, uh, but didn't need it for myself because I've always had this enlightenment experience. So I'm saying there are 10,000 other ways to quiet yourself, to calm yourself, to not be tempted by the dark force, which creates the illusion of there being a world. There is no world to me. It's never been here. It never could be here. It's impossible. I see it through it all. I'm speaking for hundreds of millions of spiritual people in the world. If you spend time with them very quietly and listen and be there or experience what they feel, it's, it's so much more. It's so true and real and pure and kind. And it's all the body of that which we call God, Father God. God gives us God 24 hours a day forever. And there are no days, there is no forever, there's no time or place or circumstance. When you're quiet, like I say, I could see the whole world and all the different problems, and, but I'm not gonna get caught up in any conversation about it with anyone here. I, I will simply be there and avail myself for healing spiritual purposes to anyone who has that little glint in their eye that they care that they feel, that they believe, that they trust, that they want something better for those that they love. It's called spirituality. It's kindness. Not being nice, nice is a fear. I'm talking about, it's a deep, powerful feeling. 
you're not tempted, you're kind because you have wide open uh, array of tools to use at your will to help, to heal, to correct, to redirect the lives, the souls, the hearts, the minds, the basic, basic perception of everyone in our world. Start with our mom. In the scripture it says uh, to honor your parents. It doesn't say to love them, it says honor. Because sometimes, you know, my parents were wonderful. My dad was very rough and tough, but I knew he always loved me. And my mom was saintly, and, uh, and I have friends whose moms were, <laughs> were very confused, or dad, or this or that. And the point is, you honor the person, and, and this is the, the center of that thought, is that at some point you'll realize what they've lived through. You'll see it in a vision, something a sister or brother will say to you, or someone else, and you realize, oh, my mom was had such and such horrible experience in her life at that time. Or whatever, you know, mostly the moms are pretty clean. And the point is that um, you'll understand everyone in the world has gone through something. And the greater you are spiritually, the more you've gone through. Um, for those who are spiritual, um, the experience of being here and the, and the attraction the dark force has on us we're, is unimaginable. It's 24 hours a day, it never stops. And uh, the good news there is we never stop being kind and aware and available to help everyone in our environment that would like to step out of the madness. There's always a way, a means. You'll find this sentiment within you with Every experience you have, you always see a, a, an open door. It might be barn doors with the sunlight coming in, and it might be this big. So I've been practicing the area of this big, so I can be very, very quiet. Again, I'm speaking for millions of us. It's just quickly to get to the point. I'll use myself. Excuse me for that. Uh, but the most subtle opening I can see in a person, I can be very quiet. So I can fill that with a little bit of light. And the people that are completely dark or possessed for some dark being, I can also stand face to face with that within a hair's breadth of not reacting even when it's coming at you. Do you understand? There is a spiritual experience called illumination, enlightenment, nirvana. The vision of God, the beatific vision. And today's thought is that we find our reason, our purpose in the quietude of eternity. That's the basis of all perception. From that place is nothing we cannot do. We can fold up this entire world system in this life, there's really nothing to it. If you're that quiet, that pure, that kind, that caring, that decent, that human, there is no other reason to live or to exist or to breathe but to care, to lift, to love, to enhance. You're born to heal the entirety, to heal the nation. starting with those around you. And you'll feel this presence that I try to, dis to explain at the very beginning of this, a subtlety that's so beautiful. And when you have that, it's actually the presence of God, but it's the presence of you. So you can see the whole world and all the conditions and all the thought streams and all the confusion and all the hate, the anger, the bestiality, the horror of it but you're unmoved. You're here to enhance, to heal, to help. And not by getting involved with the everyday tragedy, but transcendent of that, to lift everyone in very subtle ways to this heavenly place. In Buddhism, they call it the Pure Land. It's a place in consciousness. I've spoken many times of friends I've had in the Orient that were, all over the world. My friend has right here 
and that lives that way. And uh, we'll never discuss her personal anything because she's just here to give. She's an open presence. No matter what's on her neck, and there's a lot, she's going to be kind, decent. She's not going to thrash out. And that's what we're talking about. We call it kindness. It's in perception. And if you're very selfless, as my friend Annette is, then you take on the problem of the whole world. Can you imagine such a thing? Isn't that wonderful? Can there be a better reason to exist, to breathe, to think, to feel, than to be so caring in your heart and soul that you're here for the other guy, always. Every, all of us have an Annette in our life somewhere. Think of that person. And look at what they're, they're going through the same stuff we are. Believe me. Probably a whole lot more. Yeah, a whole lot more. So my friends from India, northern India that I lived with, um, at a time of great horror, they still maintain this quiet and this peace. They were there to help, to fix, to heal. And you never saw the tragedy in their eyes because they literally, uh, well, you could feel the projection of the divine light, God, and see it, feel it through their eyes. But again, we're not talking about nice and sweet or some sort of hippie yoga. You know? I'm simply saying that because I've been, we have a gym here for 30 years and sometimes the yogas are, uh, it's all, you have a certain pride in being a little bit calm for a minute, but in spirituality, you have no pride in it, you get, it's a geologic time sense, you know, like hundreds, thousands of years, you feel, you can see the whole history of the, wor history of the world. It's like my friend Whitney, she's in the wine business right now. She uh, can drink a little wine because she's clairvoyant and spiritual. She can sense not just the beauty of the wine, the land, but she can sense every pair of hands that touched it, that, uh, that fed it, that built the wine barrel, literally, literally. So there are people like that that can sense everything. And you rarely know who they are. And they rarely know who they are. I'm one that knows who I am, always. It doesn't help in any way, except that the dark side has no defense in my presence. So practice some of these self-enhancement techniques. Being calm like Donna, caring like Greg, efficient like Rob and just build on that and one day we'll wake up in, uh, in the pure land and we'll get there on the arm of someone we loved someone we've helped someone we care for you'll find all your old loves your family your mom your dad your you'll find everyone that's decent. Again, there could be that amount of people, they could be most. That's unimportant because it's a quality of experience. There's the divine force, it is God that you'll feel all the time, called nirvana, enlightenment, whatever. This illumination experience you'll have, and then there are <coughs> some people who would prefer this infinitesimal subatomic particle of confusion of hate of feeling things are solid there's nothing solid I can walk everything with my consciousness we we can all walk through everything experientially there's never been walls to me the earth doesn't exist or the sky the Sun itself is an illusion there are people around the world that worship the Sun they're Sun worshipers and that's beautiful you wake up in the morning the Sun comes up and you get that beautiful experience but looking behind it through it, you'll see the true sun, the true light, the dawn light of eternal kindness. 
all the subatomic particles of this are all the expressions of the world of the devil that make you confused that draw you into it won't be there anymore when you quiet yourself so whatever method you use breathing through your nose what are all these methods work And the reason you apply them is because you care. I have a dear friend with an injury I found out this morning. It's very serious, and so I'm going to use all my methods to help heal a friend, and we're going to walk through it together. You're going to heal the whole world through understanding there is this divine presence that you're one with, that you are. You're a thought of God that found itself here through this aperture called birth, <laughs> right? And you can see all your conditioning from birth to this, whatever point you are, uh, that's glomped on around you. And the spiritual person lets go of the conditioning, lets go of the conditioning, gets more and more quiet till they see through everything. And then there's this beatific, this beauteous light that shines through. It's called illumination. It stays with you 24 hours a day, but you're not going to walk away. You have an unimaginable reserve, a reservoir of purity, of kindness. You're going to walk hand in hand with all those you love and care for. You're going to heal everyone in every way. And then this won't have to be here anymore. This infinitesimal subatomic particle of pain, trauma, hate, all, all that create the dark force. And it has a consciousness and it's after you all the time. But if you're liking that, it doesn't stick. You carry a lot, a lot of it in a bag over your shoulder that you haven't had time to process, but you know the difference between right and wrong. And you'll heal all those who are worthy of healing. You understand there are some people that are sticklers for the demons and they are the demons and the demons are nothing if you can look them in the eye quietly. You can still armies. You can stop the whole world. by not entertaining its existence. And it just simply takes a little practice, a little decency, purity. And I'm gonna throw this in here. My friend Susan George put together a book called After Time. Please pick up a copy. It's, I'm the author, it's After Time, and it's the most gorgeous rendering of what I'm just saying. It will teach you to not react to everything in the world, and it will explain all of it in a very wonderful poetic sense. And uh, it's a true work, masterwork of divine art. Please pick it up after time. And uh, so you'll have all the details that I'm not explaining right now because I just want to get the main thrust of this across. There is a God or a Godness, whatever you want to call it, an infinite purity and kindness that actually is God. And all of that is available to us and we are its fingertips in this world and if we get very quiet, we're the healing hands of the author and the finisher of our faith. Almighty, everlasting, infinite God, our Father and our friend. And we are that. And as I explained the last week or so, that God is, an, is God. It's infinite, powerful. And there are universes of it, but it's all God and you, God, gives us that we are that if you can understand this that's why we can see everything it's like people like me are called called clairvoyant or whatever that's meaningless i'm clairvoyant to god you're clairvoyant to god being psychic to things in the world you that's really there's nothing to that that's the opposite of what i'm talking about i'm talking about being sensitive to your mother's desire for you to live fully 
and eternally and happily. When you're spiritual, you'll feel like everyone's parent. You'll feel like a parent to everyone. And you can take care of a, a lot of business from time to time and day to day. And at one time, there won't be a day or a night or a morning after. There'll simply be this simplicity, this kindness, this warmth. And you'll disappear back into heaven. That's your destiny. Not to have a good retirement or a good marriage or friendship or life or own this or have this or that or avoid some tragedy. Your purpose is to uninvolve the world from itself. And you'll disappear on your feet. As Donna found yesterday and counting backwards, 199 and then through something traumatic and it, it disappears. So there are so many thousands of self-enhancement techniques. Please avail yourself of many of them. There's no other reason to exist but to completely heal your mom, your dad, your brother, your sister, your friends, your teachers, your, which are your animals, friends that have such love, maybe an uninhibited way of protecting themselves at the last moment, but they're Kindness and warmth and love for us is uh, always present. My buddy Greg here is at, it's called the martial arts, he's a 10th degree martial artist. You can't scare him physically, so he'll always be there. So and there are many different ways we can, Annette can be in the middle of most horrible circumstances and she deals with it every day and never reacts to it. And that's her job. We each have some areas to so start with that. I taught meditation for 60 years, so I'm very <laughs> relaxed about everything. So find those things, write down 10 spiritual parts of yourself. Write down the 10 most spiritual experiences you had. Just start simple processes like that. And then you'll empower yourself. You don't have to live in the madness. So all these self-enhancement techniques are a way of unburdening yourself and unburdening yourself. And you get truly quiet and you'll see him the only God. You'll be what God is. This presence we call God is an infinite, infinite, infinite purity and kindness. And God is a human being. And so the more involved we are with God, the more sensitive to it, the more humble we are to God, the more we'll, we'll be attacked by the dark force, but the more we'll get out of it and the more tools we'll have to help and heal those in our life. So it's a wonderful, wonderful day. It's a wonderful time to be you. In a plane of being that needs you. So it's not about us, it's about helping those we love. My mom, my mom's always with me. Uh, Greg's folks are always with me and we're all friends. I mean, I'm clairvoyant to their spirituality, not their stuff in their life. Does that make sense? I don't go there. That's, again, that's a little road sign to say, don't go there, go here, don't go here. Go there. Yes, we can see the entirety of the world circumstance, but we don't help it socially and politically. We understand all the different sides of it and the absurdity of the dark side involved in it. So uh, there are no leaders. There's no one above us. No one's going to fix us but God. So fall into the pure land, this pure state of wonder, of kindness, of joy. You are a divine work of art. You allowed yourself to be born into this madness. Now you understand why. 
and you'll do your duty. It's deadly serious. There's no other reason to live but to center yourself, to become quiet, and to heal the nations. And forgive yourself of everything. You've been set up with your spiritual, everything ever wrong in your life, all the mad crackers that happened around you, you've been set up. And so if you get quiet, you'll see that. And the spiritual, the first to blame themselves or to apologize for anything, but we're innocent. Guilty without wanting to be. And innocent without knowing. Remember that? You are innocence. You are a divine presence. You will fulfill your spiritual destiny. Which to heal everyone you love and care for. And it will be coming at you more than ever. So count back from 100 to 90, get quiet. There are, I have worked on very, very, very uh, precise methods of healing, of not, not reacting to anything, of being with people that have all sorts of things, and I can listen without a hairline of thought about it, just be completely present for them, with them, so they can let it go. And acknowledging when they let it go and ending it there, or I can generate the power and the voice and the presence of God uh, when I'm with people at any time. But it's a very private experience. You don't do it in the public arena. You do it uh, quietly. Begin with a few friends. And just be there for them. And allow the divine walls to open up. You are the citadel of God. You're the temple. The temple is not made of wood or stone, but kindness. And again, not being nice, that's a fear. Kindness is a powerful experience. You're involved with this that we call God, this presence. And then you can help those you love. And that's how this is going to end. On your watch. With a kind word and a helping hand. You are the very presence of God in this world at this time. That's why you're here. To not react to the idiocy, the meanness, the cruelty of this world. You'll become as the sun is literally. You'll have an experience of unimaginable ecstasy and joy and happiness at the same time. Be very quiet and caring and helpful and decent. You have many friends. And they'll come to life in your presence. And together we'll heal and help and redirect and correct. Fearlessly, very powerfully. I say that to give us that strength that you know there's whatever it is you can be there, but the strength is an open hand and an open heart. You will fulfill your spiritual destiny. Thank you for listening. Thank you.